11.6 areas of regular polygons. Uh, before we start, let's review. Do you remember what it means to construct a circumscribed circle? We'll start with some vocab. The center of a polygon is the center of its circumscribed circle. We can see that we have our polygon here and each of the sides touch the edge of our circle. So the vertex here touches the sides here at these places. When we're looking at the radius of a polygon, the radius of a polygon is the radius of its circumscribed circle, and that is denoted by this. So here's the center of our polygon, and we are giving this black line, and this is our radius. So if you look here, really what we're trying to create are just a bunch of triangles. So I can connect it here, through. and the radius here will be the same because we have our circumscribed circle. So we can connect our center point to each of the vertexes of our polygon. All these radii have the same length. The apothem of a polygon. The distance from the center to any side of the polygon is the apothem. You can see here the apothem starts at the center of our polygon here and it goes straight down to one of the sides and creates a right angle. The central angle of a regular polygon is an angle formed by two radii drawn to consecutive vertices of the polygon. We did this on the last slide. You can see we have a bunch of triangles here. So if we start at our center, I can draw radii connecting to each of the vertex, the vertices. And when we connect each of the vertices, we have all of our radii. And inside of here, each of these triangles is going to be the central angle. In the diagram, WXYZ is a square inscribed in circle with center P. Identify the center, a radius, an apothem, and a central angle of the polygon. So pause the video here and see if you can come up with each of these. Here are the answers. So what you should have gotten is our center is P. The radii, you could have chose either PY or XP and the apothem remembers is the line that creates a right angle and that would be PQ and finally the central angle will be XPY. I'd like to draw your attention back to our square. If we look remember the apothem is the line here PQ and it's represented in blue. The apothem is the line that's associated with the right angle. And if we look at our radius, which I will do in red, red for radius, the radius goes from our center to a vertex. So we could draw multiple radii within our square. Here's an example of two, there's three, and there's four. So there's the four radii. The radii are in red and the apothem is in blue. It's important to make the distinction between the two because this will come into effect when we find the areas and perimeters of our polygons. We're going to find the angle measures in a regular polygon. So in the diagram ABCDE is a regular pentagon inscribed in circle with center F. Find each angle measure. Once again, pause the video and see if you can figure out A, B, and C. Okay, we're going to start with A, and we're looking for angle AFB, which is our central angle. And this is the first step in finding the area of a regular polygon. So the first step of finding a regular polygon is finding the central angle. And for our central angle, we are given this here. What we need to do is we need to do 360 over the number of sides. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have five sides, so we're going to do 350 divided by five, and this will give us the measure of our central angle, which will be 72 degrees, and so that's the answer for A. For B, we are trying to find A, F, G, and one way that this works, the apothem cuts our triangle in half, 
which means that we will have so we have 72 degrees for our entire central angle and if it cuts those in half we would do 72 we'll bring B down here so for B we need to do 72 divided by 2 which will be 36 degrees which means this part here and we'll do this in blue so the part here and this angle here these two angles are going to be equal to 36 so those two are going to be equal to 36 and finally we're going to bring C over here so for C we have angle G A F and I'm going to blow up this triangle and try to keep it similar to what it looks like so we have this triangle here and we have our right angle which is created by the apothem, which is the length of GF. So GF, our line GF is the apothem. And we found this angle here, and we just found that in B, so this is 36. If you recall, the angles of a triangle add up to 180. And we're looking for this angle down here, which is angle GAF, and I'm going to mark that as X. So now all we need to do is 90 plus 36 plus x is equal to 180. So when we solve for x, we should have x is equal to 54 degrees. And finally, we have theorem 11.11, .11, the area of a regular polygon. The area of a regular n-gon with side length s is half the product of the apothem a and the perimeter P. We have two different formulas here. We have A is equal to one half times A, which if we look down here at our regular polygon, A is the apothem, and the apothem is the line that creates the right angle. And we're gonna do that multiplied by the perimeter. So if we look at our second formula here, which they're both the same, we have the area is equal to one half, and we have times A, which once again is our apothem, times the number of sides n multiplied by the side length. So n is the number of sides and s is our side length. And number of sides multiplied by the side length will give you the perimeter. Therefore, either one of these two formulas will work. Example one, find the perimeter and the area of the regular polygon. Well, we need to find the perimeter. That means we need to find the side length. And we are not given the side length the side length would be this entire length from here to here. But remember, our apothem will cut our triangle in half. So if I go from the center of our polygon down here to another vertex, we have a triangle. And this triangle is cut in half. So I need to find this length here. And then I need to multiply that length by 2 to get the entire side length. And I would find x by doing the Pythagorean Theorem. And this is going to be very common on how we solve most of these. We're going to use Pythagorean Theorem or Trig depending on what we're given in our problem. In this case, we're using Pythagorean Theorem. So we have 6.5 squared plus x squared is equal to 8 squared. And when we simplify, we're going to have 42 0.25 plus x squared is equal to 64 and we can multiply or excuse me we can subtract 42.25 from each side we subtract 42.25 from each side we will get 21.75 square root both sides and when we square root this normally we do not want to simplify until the end However, in this case, we're going to simplify and we're going to do 4.7, which is to the nearest tenth. So when you're doing the Pythagorean Theorem, if you have to, you can simplify to the nearest tenth. But if it's unnecessary, try to save the simplifying until the end. Okay, we're making good progress on this problem so far. And well, we found our x. So we have x. To find the entire side length, we need to do 4.7 times 2, which will give us 9 and 9.4 is going to be the entire 
side length of our polygon. All right, now I think we're ready to find the perimeter. Remember, the perimeter is equal to the number of sides multiplied by the side length. So our number of sides here, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five sides, so that's a pentagon. So we have five multiplied by our side length, which is 9.4. And if we multiply those out, we should get 47 units. Remember, you guys are probably sick of hearing me say this already, but we need to always remember, always remember the units. Okay, now we have our perimeter. We can plug this into our area formula. So the area of a regular polygon would be one half. Remember, our apothem is the line that creates the right angle. So our apothem in this one is going to be 6.5. 6.5 is our apothem, and we multiply that times our perimeter. And for this case, we have our perimeter, so we can do 47. And you can plug that into your calculator, multiply it all out. We will get 152.75 units squared. We're not given units in the problem, so we just do u squared. So your two answers, the area is here, and the perimeter is here. These are your two answers. And our first step, remember, we had to use a Pythagorean theorem. This is very common. You're going to have to manipulate the figure to get your answers. Example two, find the area and the perimeter of the nonagon. A nonagon has nine sides. That means this figure will have nine sides. Okay, our first step will be to find the perimeter. To find the perimeter, we need to do the number of sides multiplied by the side length. And we have the number of sides, which is 9, and we have our side length, which is 8.48, 8 excuse me, 8.48 is our side length. So when we multiply these together, we'll get 76.32 units. Remember, this is perimeter, so this is just units. And to find the area, we need to do one-half times the apothem times the perimeter. We have our perimeter, but we do not have the apothem. Remember, the apothem is the line that creates a right angle to one of the sides of our polygons. And I'm going to come down here, and I know I can do this. I'm going to continue this and create a triangle from the center. From the center to the vertex, we now have our two radii, which are both 16, and an apothem goes from the center and creates a right angle to one of our sides. What it also does is divides our side length in half. So our side length is 8.48, .8, and when we divide that in half, that means each of these will be 4.24 units long. Now, we have how many sides of our triangle? We have two sides of a right triangle, which means we can use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the way I've drawn my picture, I need to be careful. Remember, we're trying to find A, our apothem. So 16, the 16 goes with this line here, which is our radius. And to do this, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for A. So we will have 4.24 squared plus A squared is equal to 16 squared. And when we solve for A, we should get 15.4. Now, we can look back at our formula in your notes to the area of a regular polygon. And we have now our apothem and we have our perimeter. So, we can find the area of this nonagon. So, we will have A is equal to 1 half times the apothem, which is 15.4 multiplied by our perimeter, which is 76.32. And when you multiply all that out, we should get 587.7 units squared. Feel free to round up to the nearest tenth on this problem. And this here is our area. And this is our perimeter. And that will complete example two. Moving on to example three, the apothem and the radius of a regular polygon are drawn below. What I want to draw your attention to are the words regular polygon, regular polygon. 
The reason that we're going to do this is because when we have a regular polygon, that means all of our side lengths are congruent. They're going to be the same. The side lengths, remember, it's these side lengths, all of them. So all of these side lengths will be the same because we have a regular polygon. Here, all we're trying to find is the area. The first thing we need to do is identify which one of these is going to be the apothem and which one is the radius. The, the way we can do this, remember, the radius goes from the center to a vertex. So the line that goes from a center to a vertex is going to be 2.37, which means that 2.2 is our apothem. So I'm going to draw in my right angle here. And this is another one of those problems where we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side length here, which remember is only half of our side length. So to find the entire side length, we're going to have to do 2x. Let's use Pythagorean theorem to find our x. We will have 2.2 squared plus x squared equals 2.37 squared. And when we solve for this, we will have x is equal to 0.88. And when we multiply that by 2, that means our entire side length will be 1.76. And now we should have enough information to find the area. And we're going to come down here and let's find the area. So a is equal to 1 half the apothem times our perimeter. Okay, I have one half apothem, which is 2.2, and we do not have the perimeter. So remember, there's an alternate formula that we can use. So instead of using that formula, I'm going to use A is equal to one half our apothem times the number of sides times our side length, which is the same thing as our perimeter. So if I cross this out, because we don't have our perimeter, I'm going to use this formula. Our number of sides, we can count those up. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 7 is the number of sides that we have, so we have 7. And we can multiply that by our side length, which is 1.76. Plug this into your calculator and solve. Our final answer should be 13.552 units squared. Remember, dealing with area, units squared. Example 4. Find the perimeter and area of a regular polygon. A regular nonagon is inscribed in a circle with radius 4 units. Find the perimeter and area of the nonagon. Step one, we need to find the measure of the central angle. To find the measure of our central angle, remember we do 360 divided by the number of sides, so n. And our number of sides here, since we're dealing with a nonagon, will be 9. Therefore, we need to do 360 divided by 9, which will equal 40 degrees. Remember, this here is our central angle. And remember, the apothem will cut our central angle in half. Therefore, both of these small triangles here will have 20 degrees. And this one will also be 20 degrees because the entire central angle is 40 degrees. Step two, find the lengths of the legs of triangles using Sokotoa. Okay, we're going to find the lengths of the legs of our triangles. To do this, I'm going to blow up one of the smaller triangles. We're going to draw this triangle here. We have our apothem, and we have our hypotenuse, and we have our base. Our right angle goes here because it's attached to the apothem. We will have our 20 degrees up here, because remember we're using the smaller triangles. And we will have 4 given here as in our hypotenuse. Now we need to use Sokotoa. What we're trying to find is this length here, x. Remember in the last couple examples, we'll draw x over here on our big 
picture. So x, what we're trying to find, is right here. This is x. We've done this before in the last few examples. If we're trying to find x, we start at our 20 degrees. So x is opposite, and 4 is on the hypotenuse. And if we look back at Sokotoa, that means we need to use opposite with hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine of 20 degrees is equal to x opposite over hypotenuse, 4. And when we solve for x, we should get 1.37. 1.37. And that is our x. Now for our third step. We have our x here. So we have 1.37. And the entire side length then will be 2.74. The only piece of information we're missing now is the length of our apothem. We now have enough information to solve for our apothem. We can use Pythagorean theorem. For Pythagorean theorem, I will use a squared plus 1.37 squared is equal to 4 squared. And when we solve for our apothem, we will get a is equal to 3.8. From here, we will have enough information to find the perimeter and the area. And down here it says, so the perimeter is P is equal to 9, which is our number of sides, multiplied by our side length. We found our side length up here. So for a perimeter, we will have P is equal to 9 multiplied by our side length, which is 2.74. Multiply both of those out, and you should get 24. 0.66 units. Good. And we are given the area of um, our regular polygon. We can just plug in now. We have A is equal to 1 half times our apothem, which is 3.8, multiplied by the perimeter, which is 24.66. And when you solve for that, you will get 46.9 units squared. 46.9 units squared. Always, always remember the label. I realize this is a long process, but if you follow the card that you were given in class, follow those steps, you should be able to solve each and every one of these problems. Just remember... The first step is find the central angle. The second step, drop an altitude to create an apothem, and this cuts the central angle in half. The third step, you could use trig or the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing parts of the triangle. And then finally, step four, once you've found the apothem and the base, you plug the results into the formula, which will give you the area. Okay, these problems have been pretty common. We need to find the area of the shaded region. The shaded region is in blue. And we want to find the area of the shaded region. We need to take the area of the entire region and subtract the area that's taken out. If we're looking at the entire region, we have a circle. So the area formula for a circle is pi times our radius, which our radius here, remember, is 5 squared. Now we can do pi times our radius squared, which is 5, and we're going to subtract the polygon from the inside of the circle. And this is a Pythagorean triple, and therefore, if our triangle is a Pythagorean triple, that means this length down here is going to be 4. You can check me if you'd like, but 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. And so, I have these memorized, and I would suggest if you guys would like to memorize them as well, and we have half of our length. Now to get the entire side length, remember, we'll do 4 times 2, which is going to be 8. And now that I have my side length and my number of sides, I can do the area formula. So I have 1 half multiplied by the apothem, which is 3, times the number of sides, which we have 5, multiplied by our side length, which is 8. Solve for this the area of the shaded region will be 18.5 units 
squared because remember we're finding the area and this will conclude 11.6 this is the most difficult material that we've covered so far and at this point now you should have all of the formulas that you will need for your test